Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Vilitam Dina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Pishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadahmayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Uta Parakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Sadvatutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kolpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Gopremanande Haribo. Welcome everyone to ISKCON of Silicon Valley. This is uh, this is a good time to come together for remembering the <coughs> philosophy of Bhagavad Gita, for remembering Krishna. Of course, every day is a good time to do that, every minute, and that's the process of bhakti, how to be constantly in contact with our original divine source, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I wrote down <coughs> from... Uh, someone I was talking to earlier, something that caught my attention, and that is, uh, alignment brings harmony. Actually, it has to do with, uh, <clears throat> it was in the context of Iyengar Yoga, which stresses uh, aligning oneself, aligning one's physical body and mental body. This is consistent with the idea of Bhakti Yoga, alignment brings harmony. That, uh, there's actually nothing really wrong uh, with us, except for being out of alignment. And the uh, Bhagavad Gita is the perfect way to become realigned by hearing Krishna's instructions for us. And one of those very important instructions comes in the 18th chapter, 48th verse. And this verse you might find encouraging. And because I thought you might find encouraging, I decided to read it. So here it is. I'll say it, and if you like, you can repeat. Sahajam karma kaunteya. Sadosham apinatya jet. Sarvaram bahi doshina. Tumenagnir ivavrita. Sahajam. Born simultaneously. Born simultaneously. 
Karma, Karma. Work. work, Kaunteya, Kaunteya. O, son o son of Kunti, Sadosham, Sadosham. with fault, with fault. Api. Api, although, although. Na. Na, never, never. Tyajet, one should give up, up. Sarva Aramba, all, all ventures, He, he. certainly, certainly. Doshena, with fault, Dhumena, with smoke, Agni, fire, Iva, as, Avrata, covered. Translation, every endeavor is covered by some fault, just as fire is covered by smoke. Therefore, one should not give up the work born of his nature, O son of Kunti, even if such work is full of fault. Let's say it together. Every endeavor is covered by some fault, just as fire is covered by smoke. Therefore, one should not give up the work born of his nature, O son of Kunti, even if such work is full of fault. Srila Prabhupada's purport. In conditioned life, all work is contaminated by the material modes of nature. Even if one is a brahmana, he has to perform sacrifices in which animal killing is necessary. Similarly, a kshatriya, however pious he may be, has to fight enemies. He cannot avoid it. Similarly, a merchant, however pious he may be, must sometimes hide his profit to stay in business, or he may sometimes have to do business on the black market. These things are necessary. One cannot avoid them. Similarly, even though a man is a shudra serving a bad master, he has to carry out the order of the master, even though it should not be done. Despite these flaws, one should continue to carry out his prescribed duties, for they are born of his own nature. A very nice example is given herein. Although fire is pure, still there is smoke. Yet smoke does not make the fire impure. Even though there is smoke in the fire, fire is still considered to be the purest of all elements. If one prefers to give up the work of a kshatriya and take up the occupation of a brahmana, he is not assured that in the occupation of a brahmana there are no unpleasant duties. One may then conclude that in the material world, no one can be completely free from the contamination of material nature. This example of fire and smoke is very appropriate in this connection. When in wintertime one takes a stone from the fire, sometimes smoke disturbs the eyes and other parts of the body, but still one must make use of the fire despite disturbing conditions. Similarly, one should not give up his natural occupation because there are some disturbing elements. Rather, one should be determined to serve the Supreme Lord by his occupational duty in Krishna consciousness. That is the perfectional point. When a particular type of occupation is performed for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord, all the defects in that particular occupation are purified. When the results of work are purified, when connected with devotional service, one becomes perfect in seeing the self within, and that is self-realization. So, there's a tendency to think that by readjusting my situation in the material world that I can find a comfortable spot. Unfortunately, there is ultimately no comfortable spot in the material world. The advice that Krishna gives in the Bhagavad Gita has to do with adjusting internally and understanding, first of all, what the goal of life is. Because, as you may have noticed, when you're working on any project or performing any kind of discipline, when you're very clear on what the goal is, then you can tolerate the various uh, obstacles or disturbances that may come, come up in the, in the course of performing your duty. Uh, not knowing where the end point is or, or what one's working for oftentimes amplifies the various kinds of faults that are there within the activity itself and makes the task seem more arduous than it actually is. So in the Gita, Krishna tells us that the ultimate goal of life 
is to remember him, especially when leaving this world. And therefore, the entire lifetime that we're allotted as a human being is meant for practice or preparation. What's it meant for? Practice and preparation. And the kind of practice and preparation that Krishna mentions in the Bhagavad Gita has to do uh, with learning how to remember him. For instance, in the 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that the perfectional stage of bhakti yoga is to, do, to have love for Krishna, and therefore, it's, it's all a foregone conclusion that when you have love for someone, you naturally think of them, and you, you're uh, naturally uh, giving to them uh, simply out of a spontaneous feeling. He says if you don't have that feeling yet, which is described, that feeling of love for Krishna, as the original state of pure consciousness, the pure soul, is to be a devotee of Krishna. Prabhupada mentions this in the ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. When a living entity is purified, he, he's called a devotee. <laughs> and so if one's uh, working in the world in various ways and at the same time is aware of the fact that the goal of life is to remember Krishna, then even obstacles become opportunities to remember Krishna. So after Krishna says, think of me always, he says, if you can't do that, then practice the tenets of bhakti in order to come to the stage of remembering me. And then if he, sa he says, if you can't do that, then you can sacrifice some of the result of the work that you're doing. Because by doing that, you'll remember me. Sacrifice the result and give it to the uh, causes that directly support Krishna. For instance, uh, Prabhupada mentions Sankirtan, like devotees here do. They, they work really hard, they go out of their way to earn money, and then they, they give it to sponsor books so they can be distributed and other kinds of projects. And, and this is the spirit of what Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita to sacrifice some of the result of one's work uh, for uh, spreading Krishna consciousness. He says, if you can't do that, then try to be charitable. In any case, wherever you can be charitable. Because by giving away what you have, you realize that you actually don't lose anything. Because whatever you have now, you're going to lose anyway. But when you give it away purposefully and preemptively <laughs> to, to a good cause, then you realize your independent state, that you're not really dependent on the things that you're holding on to. And you become uh, ready to accept the principle that there's something beyond uh, matter. You can experience it for yourself, that you become bigger by giving. And then he mentions that there are other processes. If one can't do these things, then one can also uh, learn to be ta detached. And also uh, there's processes of meditation through which one can see the difference between the body and the self. So in taking this spirit of preparation and practice, one may account, encounter so many different anomalies in life, but because one's ultimate goal is to remember Krishna, these, oper these kinds of obstacles become the chance to, to grow. Uh, there's a statement in Srila Prabhupada's purports in which he says that one must develop unflinching devotional service. Now, when one has an opportunity to flinch because of uh, various distractions or obstacles, then one gets a chance to practice unflinching devotional service. So in the verse we've read today, we get the sense, uh, and the reason I said it was a relief, because oftentimes when people take to any practice or discipline and then there are obstacles and irregularities, then they think they're doing something wrong and they become discouraged. But here Krishna is saying, there's actually nothing wrong with you. It's the nature of the world. 
because of the mixture of the three modes of material nature, which are inevitable. Prabhupada mentioned that in his purport. No matter where we are in this world, he mentions this also in the 18th chapter, uh, whether you're in a higher planetary system, a low planetary system in the, in the middle, he said there's no one that's not affected by these three modes of material nature. So you, when you're expecting it, and when you know that that's the, uh, a concomitant aspect of doing your duty in life, then uh, you won't be so disturbed by that. And here Krishna is recommending that you find a steady place, this uh, way of working according to your occupation. Everyone has a certain psychophysiological makeup. And when you find the place where you can be balanced and go on doing your, your work and your duty and your practice of Krishna consciousness, and then you uh, tolerate whatever obstacles are there and go on with your duty and with your service, that will help to help the practitioner to become steady and strong and come to the ultimate goal. This is the thesis behind this. So there, there's other evidence of this in uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam, where Lord Brahma recommends stane stita shuti katam tanuvan manobir. And that stita stita, shuta, stane stita means that Whatever position you're in now, you don't have to drastically change it. Uh, and it's not possible anyway, because as Krishna is telling Arjuna in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna had the idea that the, the duty he had to do as a warrior didn't look so good because of the way in which the, the war was shaping up. And it turned out that a lot of the people that were on the side of the enemy were his friends and relatives and then he reasoned that even if I win I lose so I don't like I don't I don't want to do my duty anymore <laughs> because it's not a good outcome and this is a part of this uh, the sense of this verse today you may have a duty to, to perform and the outcome uh, inevitably may look like what you weren't expecting or you didn't want but you still have to go on with your duty so uh, Krishna told Arjuna that if, if you shirk your duty and you go away and try to become something that you're not, you'll inevitably come back to, to your nature and you'll perform the kind of work that uh, you're compelled to do because of the makeup of the modes of material nature. You can't avoid that. It's one of the themes of the Bhagavad Gita. But what can you do? You can implement uh, your devotional practice uh, even in the situation you're in now. And this is the sense of stane stita. Stay, stay where you are. Stay in the situation you're in now, but add something. Specifically, he's saying stane stita shuti gatam tanuvan manobir. And that means add the a process of hearing and chanting about Krishna. These are the primary aspects of, of bhakti. The bhakti has nine primary practices, that, and the first two are called shravanam kirtanam. Everyone please say. These are elusively, uh, they sound elusively simple, but they're profound. Because we are what we hear. Uh, sound vibration is the primordial cause of everything that we see around us, according to the Vedas. And the ways that, uh, the way in which one can become enlightened in this world is also through sound. The way in which we develop anything in our life is through sound. Prabhupada gives this example in the second canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam when he mentions that if someone wants to construct a skyscraper building, it starts with the sound vibration. Someone begins to talk about it and say, I'm going to build a skyscraper building and then puts pen to paper and begins to manifest from the subtle to the gross. And then there are many things that that person will have to say over the phone, uh, through typing and things like that in order for all the energies then to manifest. And in a similar way, he says in that purport that 
all the energies, or he says rather the paraphernalia, spiritual paraphernalia necessary for one to advance in Krishna consciousness comes about when one makes the spiritual vibration, and he specifically mentions the Hare Krishna mantra, which is uh, a 16 syllable, 16 word, 32 syllable mantra, which you may have heard of, but I'll refresh your memory because it's always good to remember this mantra. It goes, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama Hare, Hare, Hare Hare. One of the best ways to uh, approach a spiritual mantra like this is to not take it for granted. Uh, don't think, oh, I already know that. In fact, that's one of the, uh, that's uh, always a folly in any discipline. I met a, a Madunga teacher once when I was in New Vrindavan, and I said, well, can I learn that beat from you? Can we sit there? And, he, and so he so, said, so what, if, what do you know already? And he said, I know Terraketa, which is the simplest of beats. And he goes, yeah, right, everyone says they know Terraketa. No one knows Terraketa. <laughs> he chastised me right away. It's, it's a simple hand practice, but, but it's easy to say, yeah, I already know that. And so in approaching the, the practice of, of bhakti, the primary aspect of is, uh, hearing and chanting, the transcendental sound, one can uh, approach it as a beginner every time and think, I've, I've never heard this before, and let me be attentive. Uh, there's a way that I can uh, see everything as uh, gray in this world and forget that everything I'm looking at is miraculous. Um, so, shravanam uh, means that you make the sound, spiritual sound vibration of Hare Krishna and all the paraphernalia that you need will manifest in your life in order to allow you to advance in Krishna consciousness. Uh, of course, there are other things that may appear in your life that seem like obstacles, but there are actually opportunities to develop unflinching devotional service. Otherwise, how are you going to practice if you don't have a little friction? Right? Sure, Vaisheshi Gadas. It's easy to say. But it's a fact. And the way in which the entire world is designed by Krishna, according to him, and uh, this is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam, is to help us uh, become more sensitive. After all, karma means what goes around comes around. So if there's a way in which uh, I act in ways that are out of harmony with the ultimate goal of life and with my nature, then there's a, a result, a consequence that comes to me. And that's a, the great teacher, the consequences that I get. And I, then if I'm smart, I think about it. And then I, I refine myself, I reform myself. And this is actually an exciting prospect that one can go on refining oneself to the point of developing a, uh, a soft heart. One can develop compa actual compassion. In developing compassion, one becomes actually happy because uh, practically compassion is the opposite of envy. And the Envy that uh, enters within the heart of every living entity, Krishna says in the Gita, Icha dvesha sumutena dvanva mohina bharata sarva bhutani samoham sarge yanti parantapa. He said it's all pervading in this world. It's, it prevents me from actually tasting the real nectar of life. In fact, it, it keeps me on the edge of unhappiness constantly. But by purification, through continuously doing one's duty in Krishna consciousness and vibrating the transcendental sound. All the stars are here tonight. I can't, I don't know what, it, what happened, but great to see everybody. How, is, how are you today? Happy, right? I can tell everyone looks happy. You all look happy and, and um, like you've, you've had serious spiritual practice today. You've done. So, I wanted to give you this encouraging uh, verse that there's fault in every action that you do in the material world, but, but that doesn't uh, 
preclude you from making advancement in devotional service. In fact, it can help. Now I'll take a few reflections just on the points that we've heard so far. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, you mentioned that the ultimate goal of life is preparation and practice um, to remember Krishna. So that was a, a very deep takeaway for me. It was a deep takeaway? Yeah. What, what did you find uh, interesting about it or helpful? It is helpful because um, it, it brings me back on track to be determined. It strengthens my determination that what is the real purpose. Um, as you say, also don't major in minor things. So oftentimes um, um, there is an opportunity to be sidetracked. So it, it brings my GPS to the right destination and there is this aphorism also mentioned um, that to samanvayat the ultimate goal is the supreme personality of Godhead so that remembrance was uh, helpful for me and thank you for sharing okay yeah preparation and practice and keeping your if fixed on the goal thank you also you chose the the right verse from Bhagavad Gita, which is every endeavor has some faults. So I went and I was meditating on when we started our deity worship. And, you know, initially it was more excited to do the deity worship in Bascom when you are doing. But when you read the 64 varieties of offenses during the performance deity worship, then you are extremely discouraged because there are so many pretty much all every 10 minutes you can find out that we are offenses involved in terms of understanding those facts but later on also this verse gives us the you know encouragement that no matter what it's you are not going to be perfect instantly rather than it is just to practice yes yeah thank you very much otherwise one can become paralyzed by thinking about how I'm doing everything wrong or making offenses. So much of the uh, aparadhas have to do with our attitude as well. And there's a story in the Chaitanya Charitamrita about how the servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Govinda, used to every day give a massage to Mahaprabhu and right afterwards he would go and take his prasad and then go on with other duties. And one day when Mahaprabhu would take him prasadam, he went into his cabin and he lay down within the doorway. And Govinda said to him, um, my Lord, I can't get in because you're blocking the doorway. Um, and Mahaprabhu said, I'm too tired. I can't move, do whatever you wish. And he went, he, he took rest. And so Govinda put his chutter over Mahaprabhu, and then he stepped over his transcendental body, which is considered an offense. And then he massaged the Lord, and then he stayed there. And when Mahaprabhu awoke, he said, what are you doing here? Uh, you didn't go to take prasad yet. And Govinda said, uh, well, I, had, I couldn't get out because you're blocking the doorway. And Mahaprabhu said, how'd you get in? <laughs> but he wouldn't answer uh, verbally. He answered within his mind. He said, to serve you, I'll make an offense. But for my own satisfaction, I won't make an offense. I'll stay here. He wouldn't go out to eat, but he'd come in to serve Mahaprabhu. And the severity of offenses has to do with also uh, the mood in which uh, one's conducting one's service. Of course, Prabhupada mentions in that section on offenses that one should be, uh, always have a, keep one's eye out to uh, avoid offenses, try to see them. That's part of the attitude. Thank you for that. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, whole class is so ecstatic from starting. Uh, two points I noted. One point you told that how when purpose, <coughs> purposefully and Pre, uh, preemptively. Preemptively, if you give, 
then you're not dependent on the thing you are based on that is that what that you are based on like that you are holding on yes then you are not depend on that thing if you preemptively and purposefully give that things out <laughs> and um, second thing uh, from the that <clears throat> purport you quoted from third canto 26 chapter verse number 32 um, it is stated also in the vedan sutra that sound is the origin of all objects and at the last uh, prabhupad says that we have to understand very clear um, if we approach that sound then our spiritual life begins and the other what is the verse number ईगोइजमेंटर Just a, a a little background throughout the Shrimad Bhagavatam, there's a, a discussion of what's called sankhya. Sankhya literally means to count things and categorize them very carefully. So there's a meticulous uh, cataloging of the various elements uh, that make up the material world. Ultimately, they all come from the same source, and uh, however, they they do manifest in a in a particular chron- chronological order one thing extends from another and when the material world is uh, dissolved it uh, they telescope back into e- one another the elements and they go back into uh, a um, neutral state for what it's worth that's a little bit of an introduction It is stated also in the Vedanta Sutra that sound is the origin of all objects of material possession and that by sound one can also dissolve this material existence. You can live off that one sentence. That's to celebrate it. Anavriti Shabdat. Everyone say Anavriti Shabdat. Means liberation by sound. The entire material manifestation began from sound and sound can also end material entanglement if it has a particular potency the particular sound capable of doing this is the transcendental vibration hari krishna our entanglement in material affairs has begun from material sound now we must purify that sound in spiritual understanding there is sound in the spiritual world also abai is there a sound in the spiritual world also yes thank you correct If we approach that sound then our spiritual life begins and the other requirements for spiritual advancement can be supplied. We have to understand very clearly that sound is the beginning of the creation of all material objects for our sense gratification. Similarly if sound is purified our spiritual necessities also are produced from sound. Spiritual necessities Here it is said that from sound that the ether became manifested and that the air became manifested from ether how the ethereal sky comes from sound how the air comes from sky and how fire comes from air will be explained later on sound is the cause of sky and sky is the cause of shotram the ear the ear is the first sense for receiving knowledge one must give oral reception to any knowledge one wants to receive either material or spiritual therefore shotram is very important the vedic knowledge is called shruti knowledge has to be received by hearing by hearing only can we have access to either material or spiritual enjoyment in the material world we manufacture many things for our material comfort simply by hearing they are already there but just by hearing one can transform them if we want to build a very high skyscraper this does not mean that we have to create it the materials for the skyscraper wood metal earth etc are already there 
but we make our intimate relationship with those already created material elements by hearing how to utilize them. Modern economic advancement for creation is also a product of hearing. And similarly, one can create a favorable field of spiritual activities by hearing from the right source. Arjuna was a gross materialist in the bodily conception of life and was suffering from the bodily concept very acutely. But simply by hearing, Arjuna became a spiritualized Krishna conscious person. Hearing is very important, and that hearing is produced from the sky. By hearing only, can we make proper use of that which already exists? The principle of hearing to properly utilize preconceived materials is applicable to spiritual paraphernalia as well. We must hear from the proper spiritual source. What did I tell you? Did you like it? But only a little bit, right? You liked it a lot? She liked it a lot. Okay. Now tell me what you liked about it. Yes. It's um, how Prabhupada is making it a practical that even a common man can understand. Like if we go to any yogi, he will say that it's a trance, then you have to see some light. But here Prabhupada is straightforward saying that just by hearing, you can get either material happiness or spiritual happiness. And he's also giving a hope that just by hearing, all spiritual necessities come. So going into the new year, this topic that you selected is giving me lots of hope. That simply yeah. by hearing. Yeah, and as I mentioned in the beginning, it's important to know the, the goal of the practice and also the means to reach the goal. And because there are so many distractions in life, can I get a yes on that? Yes. One sh should know what the basic practice is so that one can stick to it. Any discipline it, it requires uh, incremental improvement and application in a way that, that is uh, um, practical for the performer. And this is practical, uh, but one has to, of course, hear about what the practice is first in order to implement it and also have faith in it. If, if we hear about the, the efficacy of shruti, of hearing, and how just by hearing, aligning ourselves with spiritual sound and staying in touch with spiritual sound, that all of the spiritual paraphernalia will be, become available to us, then uh, we may be motivated to implement various ways in, in which to hear about Krishna at regular intervals throughout the day. Right? What else did you hear? Yes. I like the fact when you said that alignment brings harmony and you see that um, all around you, like if you're in the kitchen and if you don't put the jar properly in the mixer, then there's a horrible sound that keeps coming. Even in, even in relationships, um, if people are, don't have the same um, alignment, they're not aligned to the same thing, then there is a lot of friction that happens. <laughs> What's <laughs> the word mean? Let's look it up. Um, Can we? Alignment. Anyone want to venture before we give you what the dictionary says? No risk, no risk takers out there tonight? <laughs> OK, go ahead. Well, who is that? Oh, yes, go ahead. In one line. In one line. Alignment means in one line? Okay. It, it is the first one. <laughs> so it's a noun which says arrangement in a straight line. Arrangement in a straight line. Okay. Or in a correct or appropriate relative positions. Correct or? Appropriate relative positions. Appropriate relative positions. This is much what the verse was about today also, be, because everyone has a, has a, a nature according to the modes of uh, the gunas and aligning oneself with those and then going on with one's practice of Krishna consciousness is uh, one of the formulas that Krishna is mentioning in the Bhagavad Gita. Alignment there is important. Go ahead. It also means a position of agreement or alliance. 
position of agreement or alliance. alliance. Yeah. Which is also a kind of oneness or alignment, oneness that uh, Prabhupada mentions in his purports that when we become one with Krishna, we become one in purpose and in an agreement. There's an agreement that, uh, uh, I mean, we can agree, at least theoretically, that uh, the, um, there's a way in which, well, Prabhupada asks uh, the reader of the Bhagavad Gita to suspend a disbelief while reading the Bhagavad Gita and accept that there is a higher authority. And if one can accept that, that there's somebody who knows more than I do and can give perfect knowledge, and then you read with, with that in mind, the, um, this forms a kind of agreement with what's being taught, and then it becomes effective. Otherwise, if, if you don't agree with it, or, or if you think that I already know everything, or that there is no higher authority, then it's very difficult to take advantage of Krishna's teachings. Anything else? Yes, it, comes from the Fr it comes from French. Um, aligne, which means from a line or into a line. Into a line, right, yeah. okay. Yes. Maharaj, you also mentioned that dukha, that word comes, the Sanskrit word for this misalignment, duk. Yes. When uh, duk means to be out of alignment. For instance, when your axle is alignment, out of alignment with the wheel, then you get friction, you get excess heat, you can actually catch on fire, and uh, it's a rough ride. So similarly, the way in which I live my life went out of alignment with, as we'll say, uh, Krishna's will. <laughs> it, it creates a lot of heat and friction and duke, or what we call misery. But it, by the understanding that whatever is happening in the world is happening by Krishna's will and aligning myself with his will, then I don't experience misery. For instance, misery means when the world moves against me in some way. Does the world ever move against you in some way? <laughs> Always. <laughs> so then, you know, it's my perspective. I always think when natural disasters, sometimes when we've had earthquakes here in the Bay Area, I always seen how much disturbance it caused, it causes. But then I think, well, if I wasn't living in a house or if we didn't have brittle constructions like bridges, then... Uh, we wouldn't really even notice it that much. It would just be kind of an interesting phenomenon that the earth is shaking. <laughs> but because of the way I've developed my life and putting everything into the idea that like, this is my house, it's going to be here forever, and so forth, when it, when it shakes and, and moves, then I think, oh, this is misery. So, actually understanding how Krishna's moving everything and uh, staying in alignment with that is one of the ways Lord Brahma says the devotee should always think that whatever is happening to me is happening by, because of the mercy of Krishna. What else? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So when you're mentioning about um, difficulties that we face in devotional service, I was remembering this quote that I uh, liked a lot earlier. Um, Success is not measured by the height one reaches, uh, but by the obstacles one had to cross to get there. So, so I, was, I was recollecting that and I was thinking, yeah, it's, it's actually a very appropriate point. And it's, it's actually Krishna uh, gift that Krishna is giving to us mm -hmm. in order to make us better sadhakas. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other points? Where's Monisha? Oh, there she is. No, she's not. Where is she? Back there. Okay. In a minute. I just want to make sure you're here. <laughs> okay. What other points? Yes. On the internet? Okay. Go right ahead. Yeah, Maharaj, another point I liked is uh, when you said 
we are what we hear and mm -hmm. uh, i was just thinking that normally when we go for book distribution we introduce higher taste and we say we are what we eat and we give the book they say yeah yeah and then but then i was thinking that there is another another thing when introducing mahamantra that we can say that the mahamantra is so potent the sound vibration that we are what we hear so just thinking on that lines yeah during one of the political campaigns in the past i was listening to an interview with one of the campaign managers i forget even which political campaign it was but sometimes i become fascinated with these things just in the way in which they utilize resources to spread a message rapidly around the world. They have a lot of techniques that we can borrow from. And uh, this um, campaign manager said, whoever rules the airwaves wins. <laughs> and uh, this is a, a standard understanding of the practice of bhakti also. However you organize your life uh, in the sense of hearing, to accommodate your sense of hearing, uh, that's the way you'll go. And Rupa Go uh, to confirm, Rupa Goswami says, in the Upadeshamrita, Tanam Rupa Charitari Sukirtananu Smrityo Kramena Rasana Manasi Niyoja Tishtan Vraje Tananuragi Jananugami Kalam Nayat Akilamit Upadesha Saram. He gives us as the essence of all the advice about bhakti, and that is that you should organize your life so that you can hear. And as Prabhupada mentions, by purifying the sound vibration. And by doing that, he says that step by step, you'll come to the highest realm of spiritual realization. You, you'll, you'll realize that uh, you have a relationship with the spiritual world. And that manifests, he says in, in the verses uh, he composed, uh, by one's becoming attracted through the process of hearing to th those uh, residents of the spiritual world. And there is a way that one will become uh, attached to a particular resident of the spiritual world in the way that he or she performs devotional service to Krishna. And then one's attention will go more towards that uh, person and the way, the mode of service that that, that person is performing. And... Uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, whom uh, the uh, author of, of the book, or the, uh, uh, who Srila Prabhupada quotes in that verse, uh, tells how there's a step-by-step -step, uh, process of advancement, and it all begins with hearing, and it's sustained by hearing, by the process of shravanam. And one from the internet you had? This is Danvari Dasi Mataji from San Diego. Danvar pranams to you, Guru Maharaj, and to Prabhupada. I like what you said, that whatever position you are in, try not to change it drastically. Do your duty. The outcome may not always be pleasant. Hare Krishna. Yeah, because uh, what are you going to do? So the, in, in that... Um, in that vein, I want to bring another verse to the fore from the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is from the 11th canto. And this verse is Sve Sve Adhikari Yanishta. What's the verse number? Mukarvin? I thought I had it. Sweet, sweet, oh, there it is, 11212. I think you'll find this also encouraging. Do you like to be encouraged? Yes. yes. But only a little bit, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll say, please repeat. Sve sve dikariya nishta. Saguna parikirtita. Viparya yastu dosha syad Ubayoresha nishchayaha Sway sway Each in his own Adhikare Position Ya Such Nishta Steadiness 
สัพพิสกุณาพายตีพาริคีร์ทิตา is declared to be วิปาริยาโยวิปาริยา the opposite to indeed dosha impiety s i a t is อุบายโย of the two Asia this Nishchaya, the definite conclusion. You, now you really want to hear it, right? You want to hear the definite conclusion? Okay. Steadiness in one's own position is declared to be actual piety, whereas deviation from one's position is considered impiety. In this way, the two are definitely ascertained. In the previous verse, Lord Krishna explained that the path of spiritual progress begins with working without fruit of desires. Advances to the stage of realized spiritual knowledge and culminates in direct engagement in the devotional service of the Lord. Here, the Lord emphasizes that a conditioned soul should not artificially disrupt the natural evolution of his Krishna consciousness by deviating from those duties prescribed by the Lord Himself. In the lower stages of human life, one is entangled in false identification. With the gross material body and desires to execute material fruit of activities based on society, friendship, and love, when such materialistic activities are offered in sacrifice to the supreme Lord, one becomes situated in karma yoga. By regulated sacrifice, one gradually gives up the gross bodily concept of life and advances to the stage of realization of spiritual knowledge, whereby one understands oneself to be an eternal spirit soul. Completely different from the material body and mind, feeling relief from the pangs of materialism, one becomes very attached to one's spiritual knowledge, and thus one is situated in the stage of jnana yoga. As the candidate further advances on the spiritual path, he understands himself to be part and parcel of the supreme soul, the personality of God, and Lord Krishna. He then sees that his condition, conditional life. As well as his spiritual knowledge was obtained from the supreme personality of Godhead, who awards the results of all types of activities, both pious and sinful, by directly engaging in the loving service of the supreme Lord and understanding oneself to be the Lord's eternal servant, one's attachment evolves into pure love of Godhead. Thus, one first gives up the lower stage of attachment to the material body, and then subsequently gives up attachment to cultivation of spiritual knowledge. This relieves one of material life. Finally, one recognizes the Lord Himself as the resting place of one's eternal love and fully surrenders to God in full Krishna consciousness. Lord Krishna explains in this verse that one who is still attached to the material body and mind cannot artificially give up the prescribed duties of karma yoga. In the same way, one who is a spiritual neophyte just beginning to realize the illusion of material life should not artificially try to think of the Lord's intimate pastimes 24 hours a day. Imitating the stage of prema bhakti, rather he should cultivate analytic knowledge of the material world, by which one gives up attachment to the material body and mind. In Shrimad Bhagavatam, we find many analytic descriptions of the material world, and they can free the conditioned soul from false identification with matter. One who has achieved the perfect stage of love of Godhead, however, being freed from all gross and subtle attachments to the material world. May give up the lower stages of karma yoga and jnana yoga and engage directly in the Lord in the loving Lord's loving service. In chapter 19, verse 45, Lord Krishna states, "Guna dosho dushir dosho gunas tu bhaya varjita." One should not see material good and evil within the within a devotee of the Lord. Indeed, one becomes pious by giving up such mundane conceptions. s h i l a v i s h n a c h a k a v a r t i t a k a r points out that occasionally a neophyte devotee may be polluted by association with those enthusiastically executing fruit of activities and mental speculation. Such a devotee's religious activities may be affected by mundane tendencies. Similarly, an ordinary person who observes the exalted status of a pure devotee sometimes externally imitates the devotee's activities, considering himself to be on the same exalted platform of devo- pure devotional service. These imperfect practitioners of bhakti yoga are not exempt from criticism, since their fruit of activities, mental speculation, and false prestige are material intrusions in the pure loving service of the Lord. A pure devotee engaged exclusively in the Lord's service should not be criticized. 
but a devotee whose devotional service is mixed with material qualities may be corrected so that he can rise to the platform of pure devotional service. Innocent persons should not be misled by the mixed devotional service of those not engaged exclusively in the bhakti yoga system, but those unable to fully engage in Krishna consciousness should nevertheless not give up their regular prescribed duties, declaring them to be illusion. For example, one unable to fully engage in pure Krishna consciousness should not give up his family, considering it an illusion, for by doing so he will fall into illicit sex life. Material piety and analytic knowledge of, material, of the material world must therefore be cultivated until one comes to the stage of directly practicing Krishna consciousness. Did you find that helpful? Yes. Yeah? Yes. In what way did you find it helpful? <laughs> yes? So... I mean, I don't know what my position is, but um, I was particularly um, reflecting on the Gyan Yoga aspect where he was talking about analyzing the material world. Because sometimes our mind gets disturbed when someone says something, and but when the disturbance fades away, then one should ask, that okay, I mean one can put the blame on that other person or that other event, but one should ask why that disturbance came into me in the first place. I mean, what's the reason? Why I got disturbed? And if one thinks that, a devotee thinks that, you know, he's in the path of Krishna consciousness, then he should think that this probably was, was a test from Krishna and Krishna was telling me that that's what you are, basically. That's what you are. So don't try to, you know, sometimes we feel that when you are chanting or sometimes you feel that we have become a pure devotee. But then through these events, Krishna tells us that that's what you are. So, so you know, you, you have a lot, lot more to go before, you know, reaching that stage. So that's what attracted me, that analyzing our, you know, the material aspects of our life. Thank you. That was nice. Uh, right behind you, Bali. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful class. Um, this really, I, I liked it because it's, um, it's, it, it, it correlates with what we were earlier um, discussing, which is one should not, even though it seems difficult, one should not be discouraged um, in practicing. There will be no, it, it, the, initially a person may not be perfect, but once he practices, he'll slowly come up to this. And this verse also mentions um, like how you can start off with, how you can understand the material world, and then slowly and slowly you move on. Slowly and slowly you um, advance. So I really yeah. liked about that. Okay, yes. The verse itself says, Sve Sve Adhikariya Nishta Saguna uh, Parikirtita. So that means that it's... Uh, Guna. It means it's a good quality if you if you act according to your position. That means you you do the best you can with what you have right now because that's all you can do. Don't artificially try to uh, go faster than you're capable of doing. Now, of course, this brings up an interesting uh, point that Bhaktivinoda Thakur makes in the Chaitanya Charnamrita, no, in the Chait uh, Krishna Shikshamrita rather, and that is that. Um, one should not go too f faster than one's capable of. In other words, don't be artificial. Uh, be real. And practice the best that you can in, in, in the position you're in now. Try to apply the principles. Don't try to jump ahead haphazardly. But he also says don't try to go too slow either. <laughs> um, of course, this verse says, Vipariyas, the opposite, Dudosha said. It's a, it's, the opposite is true. It's a fault. Ubariyo even Esha Nishchaya. If you try to do more than you're capable of doing and you do it artificially, then uh, it's a fault. But then Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that if he gives an example of climbing a ladder, he says you put your foot on the, on the rung of the ladder 
And when it's solidly placed there, then you have to move to the next rung and you have to keep moving. He said if you try to run up the ladder too quickly without uh, getting your feet st steadily on each rung, then you may slip and fall from the ladder. He says, however, if you don't move fast enough, you don't move when you can, he said, then your advancement in spiritual life will be distant. So you, you have to be aware of the situation you're in now and apply yourself appropriately, and then you'll naturally move forward. There's a, a mentality I've mentioned many times that is worth uh, being aware of, and that is the idea that I'm permanently unqualified. And that's not allowed because of the power of Lord Vishnu. This is mentioned by Shukadeva Goswami early on in the Srimad Bhagavatam Kirata Hunandra Pulinda Pulkasha Abhira Shumba Yavana Kasadaya Yeneja Papa Yadapasha Yashaya Shudjanti Tasmai Prabhavishnavena Maha. And that is, he says, anybody can come to the highest stage of, of perfection in devotional service because of the power that's coming from Lord Vishnu. So one can't say that it's good for everybody else or for a certain number of people but not for me. Everyone can make advancement in devotional service. Another point? In this, uh, this verse is like in the one chapter before when Lord Krishna is describing pure devotional service to Dha, uh, in which verse uh, that you quoted many times, Tavat karmani kurvita na nirvidete yavata bat katha sravanadova sraddha, sraddha yavan na jayate like you, um, as long as one is not satiated by fruity activity and has not awakened his taste for devotional service by Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, one has to act according to the regulatory principles of the Vedic injunctions. Doesn't it make you want to look at that verse? Could you tell what it is, please, again? Yes, 1129. 11.20.29? 11.20.9. 11.20.9. Yeah. So in, in the purport of this, um, I see that many explanation. Srimad Bhagavatam. Although that's a nice verse also. <laughs> I'll say, please repeat. Tavat karmani kurvita. Na nirvidyete yavata. Makkata shravana dauva. Shata yavan najayate. Tavat. Up to that time. Karmani. Fruit of activities. Kurvita. One should execute. Na nirvidyeta. Is not satiated. Yavata. As long as. Matkata. Of discourses about me. Shravana Adao. In the matter of shravanam, kirtanam, and so on. Va, or shraddha, faith, yavat, as long as na, not, jayate, is awakened. Translation, as long as one is not satiated by fruit of activity and has not awakened his taste for devotional service by shravanam, kirtanam, vishnu, one has to act according to the regulative principles of the Vedic conjunctions, purport. Unless one has developed firm faith in Lord Krishna by association with pure devotees and is thus engaged full-time in the devotional service of the Lord, one should not neglect ordinary Vedic principles and duties. As stated by the Lord himself, Shruti, Smriti, Mamai, Vagye, Yas, Te, Ulangya, Vartate, Agya, Chedi, Mama, Dveshi, Madhpaktopi Navaishnava. The Shruti and Smriti literatures are to be understood as my injunctions, and one who violates such codes is to be understood as violating my will and thus opposing me. Although such a person may claim to be my devotee, he is not actually a Vaishnava. That the Lord here states that if one has not developed firm faith in the process of chanting and hearing, one must comply with the ordinary injunctions of Vedic literatures. There are many symptoms by which one can recognize an advanced devotee of the Lord. The first, in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam 127, it is stated, 
Vasudeva Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga Prayojita, Janayashu Vairagyam, Jnanam to come. One who is actually engaged in advanced devotional service immediately develops both clear knowledge of Krishna consciousness and detachment from non-devotional activities. One who is not situated on this platform must comply with the ordinary injunctions of Vedic literature or risk becoming inimical to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. On the other hand, one who has developed great faith in the devotional service of Lord Krishna does not hesitate to do anything that will further the mission of the Lord, as stated in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Devar Shibhutap Nandranam Pitranam Nakin Karonayam Ranicharajan Sarvahatmanaya Sharanam Sharanyam Kato Mukundam Pariyahritikartam Anyone who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of Mukunda, the giver of liberation, giving up all kinds of obligation, and has taken to the path in all seriousness, owes neither duties nor obligations to the dem demigods, sages, general living entities, family members, humankind, or forefathers. Srila Jiva Goswami points out in this regard that when a person fully surrenders to Lord Krishna, he takes shelter of the Lord's promise to liquidate all other responsibilities and debts of the surrendered soul. The devotee thus becomes fearless by meditating on the Lord's promise of protection. Those, however, who are materially attached are frightened by the prospect of full surrender to the Supreme Personality of God, thereby revealing their inimical mentality toward the Lord. <laughs> they ended with a zinger. So um, this is even more evidence for the, the principle that we're talking about. This verse says, Tava karmana kurvita na nirvidyete yavata matkata shravanadova shrada yavana jayate. Tava, until that time that one has full faith in hearing about Krishna, one should live a balanced life according to the Vedic reg 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 regulations and not deviate from the, the Shruti and Smriti, which indicates also Varnashrama. So, uh, tonight, uh, put an extra chair here, would you please? Because uh, we're going to, <laughs> it's important to, to develop the uh, devotional arts, uh, singing, um, and speaking about Krishna. So we have um, our first volunteer, who's going to give a five-minute Bhagavad Gita class. And um, so the parameters are that after she finishes uh, reading the verse and purport, then she has five minutes to uh, discuss. Please have a seat. <laughs> Welcome her. You know, I was thinking about it, Monisha, that uh, I like the way, the other night, we are here Sunday night all together having kirtans and shlokas and things like that. You got helpers over here, I can see. <laughs> Call a friend if you need to. <laughs> so, uh, and the, when I brought up this activity of doing five minute Bhagavad Gita class, and I asked for volunteers, you immediately volunteered I could tell that right after you volunteered, you were think, you know, immediately kicked in what you just, you know, volunteered for, which is a way in which to really move forward in devotional service, take a few risks. And so, um, <laughs> don't worry about a thing. You're among friends here. Uh, so, the, the, um, the parameters of the, of the class are, are very few. It's just, it's just to sit up here and uh, give it a shot. So you're already done. <laughs> Give her a hand. She already succeeded. <laughs> and uh, the only other requirements in the five-minute Bhagavad Gita class are that uh, one has to include at least one supporting verse from Shastra. And one must give at least one analogy uh, to bridge the point. And, and that it has the, the, whatever you speak has to be in line with the Siddhanta. And uh, after, so we're going to time you five minutes. We'll give you, uh, you'll see it goes by really fast. 
You guys are so helpful. You can <laughs> like fan her and stuff. So, <laughs> so uh, when when you got a two minute warning, then uh, Shianta Riksha will let you know. He'll, he'll give you a two minute warning. It will time you for five minutes, and then you know wind it down after five minutes. One of the hardest things about public speaking is stopping. <laughs> Sometimes people give an ending over and over and over again. So these are, this is all just practice sessions. And then uh, afterwards, we can have a couple of uh, reflections. And that means um, you can uh, tell her which parts of, the, uh, of her presentation that you liked, one of those. And then if you have any room for improvement, and you tell one of those, and then at, so we'll take three, and at the end, and you tell her uh, one thing that worked well. So one thing that worked well, when there's room, pro room for improvement, then what worked well? It's a sandwich <laughs> with a little room for improvement inside. Okay? All right. So um, why don't you move this over for her? Do you need the Bhagavad Gita? Um, yeah. No? Okay. And I, I recommend you start with um, like a Jai Radhamadava and then uh, just do like some Mangala Charn and then uh, state your verse. And then after that, you got five minutes. Okay? Get her some kartals. What? Well, they can't see if you sit on the floor. That's the only problem. She wanted to sit down, but I don't think you'll be able to see her sitting down on the floor.
जय जय प्रभु पा प्रभु पा प्रभु पा जय जय प्रभु So the translation is that um, that just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me, and thus you will live in me always without a doubt. So um, this I'm this um, I'm going to be kind of comparing between two verses between. Five minutes starts now. Um, between. Yeah, I can read the purport. Read the purport, and then start your five minutes. Okay. So purport. One who is engaged in Lord Krishna's devotional service lives in a direct relationship with the Supreme Lord. So there is no doubt that his position is transcendental from the very beginning. A devotee does not live on the material plane. He lives in Krishna. The holy name of the Lord and the Lord are non-different. Therefore, when a devotee chants Hare Krishna, Krishna and his eternal potency are dancing on the tongue of the devotee when he offers on the devotee. When he offers Krishna food, Krishna directly accepts these eatables and the devotee becomes Krishnaized by eating the remnants <coughs> by eating the remnants. One who does not engage in such service cannot understand how this is so. 
although this is a process recommended in the Bhagavad Gita and other Vedic literatures. Okay, now five minutes. So, um, this, in this verse, this is a stage of um, Raganuga Bhakti, and this is when the, devotional, uh, the devotee is emotionally attached with um, Krishna. So there's one story, and um, this starts off with when Krishna was younger than the age of five, um, he, he used to go uh, taking cows out for grazing, and um, Nanda Maharaj used to stand on top of a very like top hill, and he used to see only as far as he can see, that's as far as Krishna can go. So Krishna used to go there every day, and one day his friends started teasing him, saying that, oh, um, your parents don't trust you, and you're so immature, and that's why um, they, they don't let you go farther. So Krishna came home that night, and he was so upset. He was so upset that he went straight to bed, and he didn't see his parents. And in, right in the other room, um, Mother Yashoda and um, Nanda Maharaj were having a conversation. And the conversation was whether to let Krishna go farther um, with his friends or not. And Nanda Maharaj was saying that we should let Krishna go because um, all his friends are doing it, and now he's, I th th uh, he thinks that uh, Krishna is old enough to go. So, um, so the next morning, um, Krishna did not get out of bed, and he was, he was, really, he was still upset. And Mother Yashoda came into the room, and she was trying to wake Krishna up, and Krishna was saying, no, I don't want to get up. And um, Mother Yashoda said, you know what, last night I was arguing with Nanda Maharaj whether to let you go out farther or not, but now I think, um, now I think you should go. So Krishna got so happy, he uh, woke up out of bed immediately, and he dressed himself, and he went to, with his friends to take the cows for grazing. So um, when they went throughout the whole day, they were having so much fun. They were playing, and um, Krishna, Krishna got like tired, and he got very dirty. So the cowherd boys were saying, "Okay, we cannot let Krishna go enter the village back first. Um, so they made him sit on a rock, and they dressed him all nicely, and they gave him um, something to eat, and they made him all fresh, so he does not look tired anymore. So they, when they came back to the village, Mother Yashoda said, oh, okay, Krishna is, Krishna is good. He's not tired. He's, he was the same as I sent him. So, um, so this whole story is when, um, how the coward boys are so like, emotionally attached with Krishna that they did not want to miss his association. When, um, because if Mother Yashoda found out that Krishna is too tired, then she will say, no, you're not allowed to go the next day. So um, the, the coward boys really wanted Krishna's associ association. And that's why they did not want um, they did not want him to not come with him. So um, there's another there's also another story is when Hiranya Kashipu um, uh, sorry not Hiranya no Shima, two minutes okay um, so when Hiranya Kashipu um, so Nishima Dev rips open Hiranya Kashipu's um, chest uh, he takes he rips out his heart as well and. Um, why he rips out his heart is that is because um, Hirani Kashipu's heart was filled with anger, lust, and greed. Um, and when, like, Hirani Kashipu, his heart was filled with anger, lust, and greed. And Krishna said that in this place, in the heart, there should not be place for anyone else or for anything else. It should just be for him. So um, just like, you know, the hands and legs cannot say that I, um, the hands cannot say I don't want to serve the body anymore, and they, um, the hands does not want to, like, feed the body anymore, then um, the body will not function. And just like that, we're a part of parcel and Krishna, part and parcel of Krishna. So that means we should serve Krishna and always remember and never forget him. And um, the next verse in um, ninth, in the ninth verse of chapter 12, um, it says, the, the translation is, it says that if just try to focus your mind on me without a deviation. And, um, if, you, and if you cannot like, follow the eighth verse, which is Raga Nuga Bhakti, then um, try to follow the steps of the principles of Bhakti Yoga. And in this, in this one, this verse is on uh, Sadhana Bhakti. And Sadhana Bhakti is when the devotee um, just does it. Um, and he says, okay, if I, I chanted for three years now, and I'll take another three years break, and then I'll chant again in the three years. So this is when the devotee is not emotionally attached, but he's getting to that stage. Um, and, so, and so this is Sadhana Bhakti. And um, so.
So, and do you want to have a devil? In Sadhana Bhakti, a devotee is trying to develop a desire to attain Krishna. And um, so, sorry. Um, and like, the devotee will be like, the devotee needs a break. In, in, um, root, five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, should I? Wrap it up. So, um, in conclusion, um, in the eighth verse talked about always to live with Krishna, and Krishna says that if you are emotionally attached with me, if you are um, doing this without any expectations back, then um, you always live in me without a doubt. So that's the, the conclusion. <laughs> Bravo. Bravissimo. Okay, now uh, we get some uh, feedback. First, tell her the things that worked well, what worked for you all. Yes? It's really a good start, Monisha, especially on Ekhadeshi. I wish I get the tears that you get. <laughs> You're so original and tears of gratitude. I have so much sense of entitlement when given a chance. So I really appreciate for that. And you kept it to yourself. You didn't artificially try to uh, present something that you didn't know or beyond your uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. So it really felt original. And I think it's, it's a great start, Jed, coming in front of others for your age and the way in which you analyze the verses, it's, it's good, it's, a, it's nice. What else, a, a few more, uh, what worked well? Because there was a lot there to like. Uh, I mean, the whole talk was pretty good, Monisha, congratulations. I mean, uh, the one thing which I really like was, everything was coming straight from your heart and conviction, which was able to make connection even though I mean, uh, they, there's always some rooms of improvement, but I feel the connection which you were making with the Bhagavad Gita and the uh, Bhakti, that's going to be touching every time. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks, Monica. I am uh, Monisha. I like the way you uh, put examples uh, to discuss philosophy. It made the philosophy very easy, so thanks for doing that. Okay, one more, uh, okay, two more that, uh, things you uh -huh. liked. Hare Krishna. Uh, Manisha, I like to start it with a story, uh, right way to attract the audience, and then you delved into the philosophy, and also I like to structured approach. I mean, what you were talking about, you put it in the presentation, so we know what is the topic and which way you are heading. So it's very planned. Yeah, I congratulate you. <laughs> okay, is, is yours a, yes. what went well? Yes. Then hold it. I want to hear one uh, room for improvement. Yes. First of all, I'm sorry, I'm going to add. First of all, I think it's really amazing that you're getting up and speaking to such a large crowd of audience. Um, but with doing that... But to speak, there's 10,000 people on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, with doing that, there comes nervousness. But what I've learned in public speaking is to slow down as much as you possibly can, just to remind yourself that. But other than that, you did really good. Just slow down. Take your time. Nice. And this is a, the art of uh, giving feedback also. That uh, give where, there's, uh, where the high points are, and then when you give a positive, uh, constructive feedback where there's a room for improvement, you can also couch that. This is really hard to take um, room for improvement. And, uh, but, it, but it's really good because you, you grow from it. So that was a really nice room for improvement. You have one, anybody have one more room for improvement? And then we'll end with a, uh, okay, there's two. Can you handle it? <laughs> Make sure she's got enough water. Thank you very much for your beautiful talk. I wish I had this opportunity when I was your age. And one thing I've learned is I do this, I speak very fast 
and just learning how to breathe after you finish the sentence. That's it. Just breathe. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Very good. Vijay Damodar, for the last room for improvement, it's all we can handle for one night. <laughs> all right, Krishna. Before I tell the feedback for improvement, um, first, uh, congratulations. That's fantastic. I think I learned something I did not know, so really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, two things. One is that I think it's a natural uh, expectation of human beings, material world, that we expect things to progress positively. So maybe if you had put the order of the verses reverse, maybe that would have been better. Yeah. Just my take on this. Yes. So that's one. And second thing is to involve the audience. And by the way, I don't do it. And um, maybe throw a cookie or ask a question or just ask yeah. for a quick, or maybe just say what I think she was pointed to Prabhu say a lot. Yes, do you agree and say yes or yes or something like that. Just make them agree quickly. You don't have much time. But just get them involved somehow or other. I'm sure okay. you think of that. Thank you. Couple more, uh, and these are what worked well. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. <laughs> go ahead. It's a general comment by Upasana Mataji. She says, "Excellent presentation, Monisha." And uh, Shubha Vilash Das Prabhu says that Monisha, what a pleasure to hear you here. And great. He's in Toronto, where she came from. <laughs> and. And great understanding and realization. Proud of you. A new Ramuna Dham cultivated Vaishnavi. The reviews are pouring in, Monisha. <laughs> okay, let's give her one more hand. Okay, so um, this is the five minute Gita class. We'll, we'll be implementing this on a regular basis so that everyone gets a chance to um, give their, to practice speaking about Krishna because it takes practice actually um, in development. You happy? <laughs> yeah, if you go away hungry, that, that's a good sign. You, if you go away feeling like, yeah, there's more I can do, and then in that hungry state, then you'll, you'll, You'll develop, so it's really good. You did a great job. Okay? Yes. A question from the lecture. Go ahead. So this is from Radha Kripa Prabhu. Dear Guru Maharaj Dhanbats, I have a question. Constitutional position can easily entangle one in taking care of the responsibilities and one can easily forget the ultimate goal of life. How can one keep proper balance? Well, one way is to keep a picture of Panchatattva in your house. It's most, very important to worship the Panchatattva because uh, they're the most merciful. So if you have a beautiful picture of Panchatattva and you can... Uh, make a, a prayer every day to the Panjatattva and offer, offer your services, then you'll remember throughout the day they'll help, they'll help you to uh, stay fixed in remembering them even as you're doing your services. So that's why it's important to have the Panjatattva. And uh, repeat the Panjatattva mantra before you chant Hare Krishna because when you do that then you'll have uh, even more effectiveness in chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And that's so because the Panjatattva don't consider any offenses in chanting. They're very merciful. So worship the Panjatattva. And the best way to worship them, of course, is to do Sankirtan. That's the um, process that they're engaged in. And if you do that too, then your path will be cleared. Because uh, in this age of Kali, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the, the be-all and end-all. And if you take shelter of his lotus feet and those of his associates, because he expands himself into five forms, four other forms, then uh, you'll be successful in your devotional practice. And you'll always remember the goal by their mercy. So worship Panchatattva. Hare Krishna. You got it? Mm -hmm. The one we did the other one.
Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gaudavani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna Krishna, Vantika Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare.
हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
हाय कृष्णा हाय कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Gaur Premanande Hari Bo I have to go to Toronto. I have to leave at 5.15 in the morning. So please forgive me for scooting out the door early tonight. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Please keep the vibration going and keep uh, delivering transcendental uh, books to everybody in Silicon Valley as much as possible. And uh, keep praying to Panchita for, for a big mir miracle. Thank you very much. Go pray, Manande. Vancha Kalpatur Vishcha Kripas in the Bay Vacha Patita Nampavani Bio Vaishnava Bio Namona Maha. Let's hear it one more time for Monisha.